Okay, here we go, here we go. Running all the way. I don't have quite more running. Will we get there? Will we get there in time? Who could say? Who could say whether we're going to have it ready to be on screen? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't have it ready. Um, hello, hello. We've got a calm. Yes, yes, yes. Calm down. I know everyone's very buzzed and excited about Fall Guys, and we're going to get back to Fall Guys in a moment. But first, we've got the very important thing to do, which is education. That's why we're all here. So settle down. Pens out. Notebooks open. Okay. Good. Now we've got a joke here from M Curtains. The joke is as follows. What do you call an owl, an owl, an owl that performs magic? Houdini. Houdini. I wish I could make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? I don't think I can. Ah, oh, they got rid of it altogether and then they brought it back and it was worse than it used to be. Uh, so let's let's rub out our Skellington. Not in real life, that would be terrible. We'd just be a big blob of, of muscle flobbling around the place like a, like a bag full of tongues. Uh, tongue, of course, the only muscle in the human body that uh, is only moored at one end. Not really to think of the tongue as a muscle at all, isn't it? Um, does anyone know what the biggest muscle in the human body is? No, the brain is not a muscle. That's just something weird people say. The big, the biggest muscle is the tongue. Well, not, not my tongue. I can say that much. I can say that much. Right. What do you call an owl that performs magic? Okay. Well, what, what, what do we mean by owl? What do we mean by owl? Oop, yeah, that's far too slight. That was from uh, from when we were doing framed. Okay, I'm going to draw an echo owl here, to the best of my ability. Oh, it's an owl that's just uh, overheard somebody insulting his mother. So an owl is a uh, traditionally nocturnal uh, creature. I think that's an owl. It might just be the... Uh, Open University logo. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's a not. It's generally a nocturnal creature. That's slightly better, isn't it? Um, and it has this very distinctive call. I'm, I'm. I'm not very good at doing it, but I'll give it a go. Hang on. Hang on. I'll do it with. The, I'm going to turn the mic off to just do a little dry run. sort of sound which largely we uh, might amazing thank you um, which uh, we write or think of in, in various ways twit woo which um, I don't think I don't know I don't think the uh, the uh, t -t -t is really there in the in the uh, in the call but some say twit woo but um, if anything it sounds more like because it's sort of <laughs> It's, it's it's more like it's more like it's going who 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 yeah yeah so that's the first part of this joke we've got to we've got to take on board the second part of the joke is Houdini who's this Houdini chap well um back in the uh, early part of the 21st century there was a, a rabbi uh, by the name of Weiss, who um, promised, being promised a um, an affluent, uh, what's the word, parish, to uh, set up a, um, I can't think what 
the word is now. Jewish Dem Synagogue, thank you. Um, yeah, I promised a, 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 a synagogue. Basically, uh, came over with his wife and his um, children. I forget how many children. Great kazoo impression. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, yes, and found that actually, no, there wasn't really a, a synagogue waiting for him. Oh, it's for Elf, thank you. Um, I had to. Well, uh, to be honest, we not we don't get nearly enough clips on this stream. I've been having to to throw the book at chat, uh, but I'm, I just haven't got round to it yet. Um, so thank you, Rafi. Thank you. Um, where was I? Oh yes, and um, uh, eldest son um, Eric Eric Weiss Eric Weiss, uh, and basically. Uh, the move was a huge disaster for Mr. Weiss. And um, basically, it basically killed him. It basically killed him. The the, the failure killed him, um, which meant that um, Eric Weiss had to had to look after uh, his his family. And um, I'm not quite sure why this was the, the method that he came up with, but basically he um, he decided that uh, he would become a sort of a performing strongman. And the kind of strongman that he became was a sort of strongman who was very good at getting out of stuff, you see. Now, um, anti-Semitism was rife back in those days, you see. So um, Eric Weiss felt that he needed not only um, a stage name, because Eric Weiss wasn't a very interesting stage name, uh, but also, he, essentially, to, to mask his Jewishness, so if he was to stand any any real hope of success, and so off off went Eric Weiss. Now Eric, we think of that as being Eric, but it was it was more correctly pronounced Ari, Ari, Ari Weiss. You see, so Ari became Harry. And Vice became Houdini, which gave him a sort of an Italian, Italian flavour. But as I said, I believe he was Hungarian. Might have to double check that, but I think he was Hungarian. And um, yes, uh, so the, so he basically started an act which, um, oh, it wasn't a hu it wasn't a huge thing. Basically, um, well, well, the the grandfathers of. Uh, the godfathers, I should say, of um, stage escapology, and I think we've much mentioned them before on the stream, um, were uh, the Davenport brothers, Ira and uh, William Davenport, who actually performed a dark seance um, under the... They, they were practicing spiritualists, but their father was, was quite high up in the spiritualist church, and you can find... Uh, you can find... There's uh, letters on... in. in, in archives of him writing writing to spiritualist chaps um but yes his sons uh, uh ira and william had this act where they were basically the the, the the fashion was to do a dark seance and in a dark seance what they would generally do is uh you would tie up the medium um seances generally weren't what they are today which is essentially um at the very most somebody somebody channeling a voice um I would say, you know, 99% of them, you know, that's that's as, as far as they would ever go. Um, they would, um, yeah, but back in those days, what you'd have is you'd have various sort of accoutrement. You'd have like um, perhaps a doll or a teddy bear. You'd have um, something with bells on it. You'd have maybe a, a luminous trumpet, a trumpet painted up with radium. That was quite common. So um, you'd have everybody... Ah, this is an interesting point as well. Everyone holding hands during a seance, and there's all that talk of um, of it being to sort of create this circuit of energy that the spirit world uses to, to manifest. Uh, but the main reason for that really was um, it was sort of a silent convincer. It was never, never introduced as such, but the idea is that if the medium is sat there um, holding hands with the, pe with the person on either side of them, then they can't they can't get out of their chair they can't move around they can't do anything and there were strategies to, to essentially fake that uh, which i'm not going to divulge here 
because um, it's more fun not to. But um, yeah, so uh, another re- another thing that they could do instead of uh, the circle of hands was to literally just be tied down. And um, I will tell you the secret there is that what they then did once they were tied up was to slip their knots uh, and then manipulate the stuff on the table in the dark, you see. The, the, the trumpet was basically, the, the voice would come through the trumpet, but the trumpet would be flying around the room at the same time. Very compelling illusion in the day, I'm sure. Um, but yes, uh, William and Ira Davenport came up with the idea of um, being tied into a cabinet, you see, essentially compartmentalizing the darkness so that the spirit world could interact within the cabinet. Um, so that essentially they could do it with the lights on, but still not be seen. And um, the, the, the sort of the, the highlight of the act, the culmination, the, the peak of the act is basically they get somebody in from the audience or a, me- a member of the, um, the committee, because there would always be like a committee to check everything out, which is why you get, and still today, you get somebody put out the audience. If you're doing a cabinet act, uh, you'll get somebody up out of the audience to sort of hammer away at the size of a box or whatever. That, that whole sort of notion of the committee um, sort of has trickled down into that. And um, yeah, so they'd be shut up uh, with one of the committee members and then like the committee member would, uh, his jacket would be taken off and he'd, he'd be turned around and booted out or whatever. And uh, they'd pull the, pull the doors open, of course, William and I would be, would be sat still in there in their bonds. And that, that, believe it or not, was the birth of escapology. I think it's a planet in the audience. A planet? Are you sure? Um, sometimes it was a plant and sometimes it wasn't. It, depend, it depends, really, on the situation. So one of the big assumptions in magic is the thing that you're seeing is always how it appears to be. The act. The act never changes. Uh, not necessarily true. Um, that's, a, that's a major secret, really. But it's obvious. It's an obvious secret, but it's, it's out there. Um, yeah, so Houdini sort of, yeah, I mean, let's, let's be fair about this. Houdini was a giant, giant of escapology, but it, and escapology was very much in its, in its, um, in its youth. But fundamentally, underneath all of that, Houdini was a magician. Uh, one of his most famous tricks, for instance, uh, and he'd do this on stage much to, um, there was a lot of professional jealousy around Houdini. Um, if you read the book Hiding the Elephant, there's this wonderful bit where Houdini had this illusion where he would, we, he would make an elephant disappear, you see. And um, they'd bring the elephant on, the elephant would go into a cabinet, and then a moment later he'd open the cabinet and, uh, and the elephant would be gone. And then the, I think that would be it. The elephant never came back and they'd, they'd sort of wheel, wheel the cabinet off. And, and uh, the, this went on at the Hippodrome Theatre. And... Um, yeah, the, the joke was that three people would wheel the cabinet on and then 12 people would wheel it off, uh, heavily implying that the elephant was still inside, you see. You know, so people, other magicians were quite, either, either very supportive of Houdini because he was a very powerful figure and he was basically the, the most sort of famous, essentially one of the most famous magical performers there. Um, but yeah, he did this one trick, which is quite well known, where you take a number of needles and you put them in your mouth and you take a bundle of, of, uh, of thread, you put that in your mouth and then you would draw the... Uh... And he got long arms. He'd, he'd draw the, uh, the thread out of uh, his mouth and all the needles would be on it. Um, yeah. But anyway, my point here, Harry Houdini was a magician. We tend to think of him as an esca- escapologist. Obviously, a lot of the escapology that he did was... Um, I mean, some of it was essentially real. As If you define escapology as the ability to get out of uh, your bonds... Um... Hello? What's going on there? Oh, in other news, I have a new keyboard. <laughs> uh, all these complex illusions would be much easier if they simply use real ghosts. Absolutely, M. Kearns. Absolutely. That's better. That's better. And, um... Oh, I see. That's a thread. Oh, lovely. That's lovely. Well done. Oh, I like that. Can we, we get some love in chat for what M. Curtains has just done with the emotes? Um... And, uh... Yeah, so a lot of his... But a lot of his escapes and a lot of his acts... Like, he, he did an act where he would walk through a solid wall and the wall would be built... Um, on on the stage, 
you'd have all of these all these bricklayers essentially assembling the wall and then he would uh, behind a screen walk through it Not, you know we look at that today and think, well obviously that's a magic trick so yeah basically what I'm saying is um, under, underneath his escapology he was a magician that was basically it so in our in our joke what do you call an owl that performs magic we have Houdini you see so it's taking the, the sound of the owl and attaching it to Dini to create a magician name which sounds like our, our Harry our Harry's name and uh, that's that's why it's funny and Kirsten's have I explained that joke to your satisfaction I went off on a tangent there thank you very good thank you thank you thank you joke explained Just Squid Game Spoiler.